I am Adil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question based on circumcenter of a triangle. We will see a strategy to solve such a question and we will also learn about a shortcut method, right? So the key here is also to get shortcut method. So we'll see that shortcut method later. Let's first talk about uh, the method. So how do you find circumcenter? We need to find the circumcenter of the triangle with the vertices minus 7, 1, minus 5, 5, and minus 1, 3. We are given four choices. Let's call them as A, B, and C. Okay. So the, the idea here is that let's say we have a b here right and then we have the the other line which is from b to c for example right so the first step will be to find their right bisectors right so we have to find right bisectors wherever these right bisectors meet that becomes the circumcenter we'll call this as o from where all these distances are equal. Right? So you can form a circle. That is the whole idea. Is that clear? So that becomes a circumcenter. So I hope the concept is clear to you. Now let's begin to solve this particular question. The points here are A, B and, and C. We are interested in finding the circumcenter O. So first step will be to find the midpoints of each segment. Let me call these midpoints as, let's say this midpoint as M capital of AB and we'll call this as M capital of BC, right? Okay, so, so what is the midpoint MAB? So first we'll begin with these two points a and b right so we are given a which is minus 7 1 and we are given b which is minus 5 5 so first step let's find the midpoint of a and b midpoint is add them divide by 2 so we get minus 7 plus minus 5 divided by 2 that is the x value and then we have 1 plus 5 divided by 2, the y value. So, so the midpoint for AB is, this is minus 12, so that gives you minus 6 when you divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now, second step is to find the slope, right? Perpendicular will be negative reciprocal slope. So, so let's find the slope now. So we say slope, lowercase m I am writing for slope of a b will be y2 minus y1 so 5 minus 1 divided by x2 minus x1 minus 5 minus minus 7 correct so that is 4 over this becomes plus 2 so the slope here is 2 so we get this slope now what is the perpendicular slope we are interested in right bisector. So perpendicular to AB will be negative reciprocal, negative half. Correct? So now we can now write down the equation of right bisector. Of AB. So it has to go through the point which is the midpoint, which is basically minus 6, 3. So it goes through the midpoint minus 6, 3 and it has a slope perpendicular to a, b which is minus half. You could write this as y minus y value which is 3 here equals to minus half the slope times x minus x value which is minus 6. So it becomes plus 6. Correct? Now we can simplify this cross multiply. So we get 2y minus 6 equals to minus x minus 6. Bring them together, x and y terms. We get 2y plus x equals to 6 minus 6 will be 0. So we get one of our equations. So that is one equation which we got for the 
right bisector of AB. So I hope all the steps are absolutely clear, right? Now, let's do it in shortcut. We'll now find what is the midpoint of BC. So midpoint of BC is what? B to C, right? So X values minus 5 minus 1 over 2. Y values 5 and 3. Add them, divide by 2, correct? So we get minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3. A divided by 2 is 4. So that's the midpoint, right? Let's find the slope BC. Y values 3 minus 5. X values difference minus 1 plus 5. So that gives you minus 2 here and 4 or minus half. Correct? So that means that the perpendicular is what? So perpendicular to BC is basically 2. Right? So we get 2. So it's interesting to note that the slope of AB was 2 and slope of BC is negative reciprocal. So that means this is also the diameter of our triangle. Okay? Oh, let's continue and then we'll see how to figure it out. So we got a slope of 2 here. Now we will write the equation of the form which we used earlier. Let me write down the equation y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Correct? So that is the equation which we are going to use. So y minus the y1 value of the midpoint. We are looking into the midpoint. Correct? Which is minus 3, 4. And we are going to use the slope which is 2. So, so the midpoint is minus 3, 4. So y minus 4 equals to slope of 2, x minus minus 3 makes it plus 3. So that gives you y minus 4 equals to 2x plus 6, bring 6 to this side, minus 6 minus 4 equals to 2x minus y, minus 10 equals to 2x minus y. So this is our second equation. Two equations, two unknowns. Okay. You could eliminate by substitution or elimination. We can write what y is from here. y is equal to 2x. Bring y here, 10 here, plus 10. Right. So we get our fourth, third equation. We'll actually substitute this third equation in 1 and then solve, right? So let's do it here. So substituting 2x plus 10 for y, we get 2 times 2x plus 10 plus x equals to 0, which is 4x plus 20 plus x equals to 0, or we get 5x plus 20 equals to 0, or 5x equals to minus 20 or x equals to minus 20 over 5, which is minus 4. So one of these two values, correct? So x is minus 4 for us. We can substitute x as minus 4 in this equation. So we get y equals to 2 times minus 4 plus 10. So that is minus 8 plus 10, which gives us 2. So we get b as the right answer. Do you see that part? So B is the right answer for us. Correct? So, so that's a way to actually figure this out. Now, you must have noticed one thing that most of the questions given in this form in multiple choice will actually keep these two as points of diameter. As we noticed here, that angle came out to be 90 degrees, right? Since they were opposite, right? Do you see that? So, so there are plenty of chances that while you're solving this, and when you notice that the slopes are negative reciprocal, you know these lines are perpendicular. Now that really happens only when you have a circle in which two points are on the diameter, right? Only then, 
third point will give you 90 degrees angle. So that gives you a hint that your circumcenter is basically average or midpoint of far points. What I'm trying to say that these two values are far away, right? So if you check the midpoint, you get your answer at times. So in a multiple choice question, it is not a bad idea. If you don't have time to do all these calculations, which we did just now, you would actually rely on this approximation and that helps. So that's a key. So in a multiple choice question, you can actually apply this and save some time if you don't have that time, okay? Uh, then you could do it. I hope you understand and appreciate this particular strategy. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.